9-11 was Today we have segments over 9-11. teachers told us where they were. Gilman. In the Rochester Cemetery. You were right here. And storms are likely for your Thursday, especially during the late morning and early afternoon hours. I'll have a closer look at future radar and the potential for severe weather coming up in your full forecast. Hey, I'm Caitlin. And I'm Brooklyn, and you're watching SVTV. We are making stories by teens for teens. Creating a platform, finding character, and giving others a voice. This is SVTV. Today is 9-11. Emory went and asked Mrs. Chauve and Mr. Alexander about where they were during 9-11. 9-11 was an important day in history and a few of our teachers told us where they were. Um, I was at home. I was a college student and I was headed, I was actually getting ready and I was watching the Today Show like every morning and so I was watching the Today Show, getting ready to go to school. Um, I had an econ class that morning and um, was just watching the news and then they cut in and everything started happening and so saw it all live on TV. Uh, I can remember it really vividly. I was teaching accounting class in here at in E2, room E2, and uh, I, don't, I don't know exactly what the lesson was or what we were doing, but then um, Mr. Freeze was two rooms down in E6 and he kind of came down he said you need to turn your tv on and i don't know how he got alerted to it so we got our tv on just when the second plane hit and so we saw that and um and then we just watched that the rest of the class period we kind of didn't do anything else and it was kind of eerie around here because students in the hallways were quiet every class you would put it on you'd try to teach but that's all anybody could watch or or could take care of so everybody was tuned in to what was going on in every class and it was just you know when kids would go from class to class they're kind of quiet there wasn't like the you know fun laughing and everything it was just kind of a strange and eerie day 9-11 will forever be a day remembered by those who were alive everyone who is alive during 9-11 will always remember that day we're going to switch stories to a class project McAllister's class also recently visited the Rochester Cemetery. Let's go see what they did. Philip Gilman. You were right here? Yeah, we were right here. Uh, Steve Gilman is around here. We are here to learn about different Civil War veterans who are buried here and what they did, and we're going to put together a book about them. So we went over to each headstone and took photos, and then we got down the longitude and latitude co coordinates for each person. Uh, both Civil War classes are here today to, one, find all of the Civil War veterans that are buried here, confirm that they are actually buried here, two, to take pictures, geotag them, and then get the, any information we can from the area and the plots, uh, the sections, and do a lot of just basic research. It'll let them know the location, the names, where they're all buried at and then what the person did during the Civil War. We collected all the information of where they were born, died, and written a bunch of stories about them. Well, hopefully the, the idea here is for not only for genealogists, but just for the general public. So if they want to come in and take, take a Civil War tour of Rochester Cemetery, as one of the oldest cemeteries in Kansas, uh, has a plethora of Civil War veterans that are buried here. We please would like you to read our book. And Enjoy. They're making a book. Make sure you go check it out. Now over to Brooklyn with the announcements. Please join us for the first wellness night tonight on the track at 6.30. Picture day will be September 16th and 17th during English classes. Seniors, if you don't have an English class, please see Mrs. Riley at MC2. The Robots Club will have a meeting after school September 12th from 315 to 515. If you're interested in applying to the Student Advisory Counselor, they're accepting two from each grade level. Apply on your class on Schoology if interested. ASAP is Tuesdays and Thursdays after school. 
until 425. Students needing to ride the bus home must be signed up in office by 115 on those days. Now over to Caitlin with the sports. From September 9th to the 20th, the Interact Club is collecting aluminum cans to donate to the Cat Association of Topeka. Part of their funding comes from the recycling of aluminum cans. You can drop your cans at the North Door, East Doors, or the Lunch Room. Meow. Fikes. Picture day is September 16th and 17th. Doesn't matter what you look like as long as you show up. Varsity volleyball players went to Highland Park and finished 2-0. JV traveled to Emporia and finished 3-0. Also, Varsity and JV soccer beat Lansing last night. Tomorrow night is Spirit Night for the Viking soccer team. There will be candy, prizes, and other fun giveaways during the varsity game. Game starts at 6.15. Congrats to Lewis Dieter for being selected as the WIBW Female Athlete of the Week. Lewis is a freshman who has set a new school record by shooting a 18-hole score of 75 and winning the Seaman Interventional Golf Tournament. Congrats, Lewis. Now we're to Josh with the weather. Good afternoon to you. It's another toasty one for today with highs in the upper 80s to near 90 degrees. Plenty of sunshine to go around for your Wednesday, but some big changes are on the way for tomorrow. Here's the severe weather outlook. You can see a slight risk for severe weather for areas near and southeast of the Kansas Turnpike. So let's show you the future radar. By 8, 8 o'clock tomorrow morning, you can see some storms just to our west. Those will march east throughout the morning. So some scattered showers and thunderstorms possible tomorrow morning. Here's the picture by 1 o'clock. You can see perhaps some more intense thunderstorms starting to fire up and more widespread activity is expected during parts of the afternoon. You can see by 3 o'clock, we're still dealing with the scattering of showers and thunderstorms, but notice by 4 and 5 o'clock, this really starts to shift to the south and east over towards Kansas City. So with all of these storms, what are we talking about in terms of severe weather? Here's what we're thinking. There's a slight risk for some wind gusts that might be up to 60 miles per hour or some hail, perhaps up to quarter size. But most of this is just going to be heavy rainfall and lightning for your Thursday. Here's the seven day forecast. You can see that we do cool down behind those storms on Friday. Highs in the low 80s, a slight chance of storms Saturday morning, but most of the weekend should be dry and highs already back into the low 90s to start next week. Caitlin Brooklyn, back to you. Thank you, Josh, for the weather. That's all we have for today, Vikes. Tomorrow we have a teacher segment over Mr. Woodland. Have a great day. I hate this chair. Ow! Ow!